For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. A Gallup poll released in March found that 45% of people in the US believe that China is the greatest enemy of their country. A July Pew Research poll reported that 73% of people in the US hold negative attitudes towards China. This is largely as a result of their belief that China is responsible for the coronavirus. These figures are nothing but a reflection of a series of vicious campaigns against China by the US and its allies. The US-led aggression against China, termed by some to be a new Cold War, is advancing at a steady pace under President Joe Biden. Biden has of course kept many of the Trump era tariffs, continued military exercises in the South China Sea and is employing a more sophisticated and diplomatic approach to organize US allies against China. Top Republicans and Democrats alike have fed into this campaign of paranoia and distrust towards the country. The recent passage of a bill targeting imports from China's Xinjiang region over claims of human rights abuses is the latest in this campaign. Facing year two of the coronavirus pandemic, a worsening climate disaster and historic inequality, the Biden administration inherited a patchwork of crises to grapple with this year. While these problems continue to spiral, Biden has intensified a concerted effort of imperialist aggression and propaganda against one key target abroad, that's China. Here is a roundup of the most notable moments in the past year in the US policy on China. The year ended with Joe Biden signing into law a massive $777 billion defense budget. In 2020, the US spent more than the next 11 countries on defense and its military budget was more than triple that of China's. This will only increase with the new budget, with Congress allocating $24 billion more than what Biden had asked for. There is a clear China angle to a lot of this money and many of these proposals. Former Admiral Philip Davidson submitted a request to Congress for an additional $27.3 billion for the Indo-Pacific Command. The aim of this command is to base over 70% of US overseas military forces in the Asia-Pacific region. This amount alone is more than the military budget of Brazil. In March, the first major summit between top Chinese and Biden administration officials took place in Anchorage, Alaska. The talks were regarded as largely unsuccessful in easing tensions between the two countries. Both sides ended up accusing the other of human rights abuses and doubling down on their opposition concerning the status of Taiwan. Long-time Chinese diplomat Yang Jiechi rebooked the US use of military force and financial hegemony to carry out long-arm jurisdiction and suppress other countries. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, on the other hand, concluded the summit stating that the two nations are fundamentally at odds. Joe Biden and Xi Jinping also met virtually towards the end of the year, but there were no breakthroughs. The theme of a multilateral approach to China continued at the G7 summit and the subsequent NATO meeting in June. At the G7, the informal grouping of the world's largest economies, the US pushed for more hostile orientation towards Russia and China. In a joint communique, the G7 nations called on China to respect the rights, freedoms and the degree of autonomy for Hong Kong enshrined in the Sino-British Joint Declaration and Basic Law. It also demanded that China, once again in quotes, respect human rights and fundamental freedoms, especially in relation to Xinjiang. The statement also made claims of human rights abuses in Hong Kong and called for an investigation into the unhinged theory that COVID was man-made in a Chinese lab. Claims that the Chinese government is committing human rights abuses, including forced labor and genocide against Uyghurs in the province of Xinjiang, have been given a tremendous platform under Biden. This allegation has been presented as a fact and has been used to levy sanctions, freeze assets and impose travel bans on high-ranking Chinese officials by the US, EU, UK and Canada. The US State Department has relied on the work of Adrian Zenz, a far-right-wing religious fanatic who believes that he is being led by God on a mission to end the Chinese government. His work has been found to be riddled with data manipulation and statistical errors. The first independent report on the situation in Xinjiang, released in March, heavily cited his work, along with a host of other US-backed lobbying firms and propaganda outlets. The report was published by New Line Institute for Strategy and Policy, which is led by a long list of former US State Department officials, military consultants and intelligence experts. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi called the accusations of genocide a thorough lie, mentioning that the population of Xinjiang has doubled in the last four decades and the GDP of the region has grown by over 200% in the same time. Yi has repeatedly invited foreign delegates to visit Xinjiang, including representatives from the UN Human Rights Panel. In September, the US and its allies took the multilateral approach to the next level with the formation of AUKUS, a new enhanced trilateral security partnership between Australia, the UK and the US. 
Despite not mentioning China by name in the announcement, its emphasis on the Indo-Pacific was regarded as a thinly veiled code for China. The Australian arms deals seem to be the central tenet of the pact, with Prime Minister Scott Morrison stating that the first major initiative of AUKUS will be to deliver a nuclear-powered submarine fleet for Australia. This effectively cancelled the pre-existing order of diesel-fueled submarines Australia had with France. The sale might even be a violation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The US has continued to go out of its way to support Taiwanese independence and ramp up its military presence along the Strait of Taiwan. Last year, the US signed two weapons deals with Taiwan totaling US dollars $22.4 billion. This prompted China to sanction a host of US weapons manufacturers. The US and UK spent this summer increasing their number of aircraft carrier strike forces along the Strait of Taiwan and the South China Sea. In October, the Wall Street Journal exposed how US Special Operations Forces and Marines have been secretly training Taiwanese troops since 2020. The US also instigated tensions more by inviting Taiwan to its summit on democracy held in December. This was widely noted for leaving out Russia and China. At the summit, the US also announced its diplomatic boycott of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. As the year comes to an end, tensions between the world's two great powers are unlikely to cool down anytime soon. The possibility of this new Cold War turning into a hot war is an existential threat for the entire planet. Opposing further escalation remains the imperative duty of all those who value global peace and stability.